what I'm just going to do very quickly is, is talk just about Fibonacci numbers, uh, about where they come from. And the extraordinary thing about Fibonacci numbers is they come from almost nothing. Right? If, you, if you think about the simplest thing there is in the mathematical world, it is, uh, well, any suggestions? Zero. Yeah, so I told you the answer's up here. And if that's, if that's the simplest thing, what's the second simplest thing? It's one. Now, if you take a zero and a one, and you do the simplest possible thing you can do with two numbers, you add them together, you get a one. And then the simplest kind of computation, the simplest thing you can ask a computer to do is do the same thing over again. So just take that process of the two numbers we created, a one and a one, and add them together again, make two. Repeat that again, one and two is three, two and three is five. I've been saying these Fibonacci numbers a lot this year. Okay, so that's Fibonacci numbers. Um, uh, and I'm going to come back in a minute and talk about seeing them in sunflowers and what Turing thought about it. But now shall we hand over and hear some music that I think is structured in a Fibonacci One, one, two, three, four, five, I think I was on video talking about some Dutch academic. This is the, um, the guy. In 1938, he went out and ca counted 319 sunflower heads. I have a newfound respect for him uh, <laughs> this week. And he found that 82% of the time he got a Fibonacci number. Now, that's important, because I, I was saying to you before, oh, yeah, you find Fibonacci numbers. But the question is, well, how often do you find Fibonacci numbers? How many do you have to throw away before you find one that's, that's got a good pattern? Uh, and if you don't find a Fibonacci number, what do you get? Well, it turns out that often you find double a Fibonacci number. Quite a lot of the time, 14% of the time, you find a, a, a number that comes from a different sequence. Well, you don't start with 1 plus 2 is 3, then 5, 8, 13, but you start with 1 plus 3 is 4, and you keep on adding the previous two numbers to get to them. These are called Lucas numbers. And then there's an even rarer uh, um, uh, sequence, so rare it hasn't got a good name, where you start with 1 and 4. And this Dutch guy, he found two of those. So there's a question. How many did he throw away before he got to that picture? Uh, is it still true in the 21st century in Manchester that we get that picture? Those are uh, some of the important questions. And as I talked about in the video, just to uh, replicate his data. So here is the first set of results. Right? So in 1897, someone did 120 odd. In 1938, that's 319. And in 2012, we got 570 on Thursday. So yay. Right, we won with the most. <laughs> That's quite good. I think we could stop now. But um, uh, the real question is, what do those sunflowers look like? Right. So here's here's the answer. Right. So in 1897, about 82% of them were, Fib were Fibonacci, uh, were Fibonacci, or uh, at least one was Fibonacci. In 1938, 95%, and in 
And in the big data set, the one that uh, was all the data set, we found about 72% had this Fibonacci structure. So a fair bit less. But I'll show you some of the, some of the data that, that went into that. We had a, we've just very quickly looked at a better meter. We thought, what's the best way to find really good data? It's just restrict it to data from Manchester. <laughs> None of those people with all that sun. Um, <laughs> uh, so in, in the restricted data set that we just very quickly looked at, we're up to 85%. So it's still the case, as it was um, uh, 300 year, 250 years ago when this phenomenon was first noticed at all that, that uh, sunflowers in Manchester have got Fibonacci numbers. It's still the case that you get these other kinds. Um, but what's interesting is really this fourth bar here. So this is the, the, the percentage that, that, that were Fibonacci or its, or, its, or, or its friends. And as you can see, the green bar shows quite a big, uh, big not Fibonacci-ness. And some of that is people typing stuff in wrong or not understanding what we were trying to do. Uh, and we've got some work to do now to work through the data sets because everyone's loaded, uploaded photographs so we can check to go through that data set and work out exactly how much of that uh, is really true and how much is artifact. But interestingly, some of the ones that we found weren't Fibonacci numbers. Now, here's the first problem that we had. There's an invitation on the website to upload a photo of your sunflower, which I assume must be in the bushes. <laughs> over there somewhere. So thank you, Australia, for that contribution. <laughs> we excluded that from the data set. Uh, but we got a lot of really beautiful sunflowers. This is a, a nice one. Um, uh, um, uh, it's got 65 and 89, like, like we like. Unfortunately, the person typed it into the website as 89.89, just a fat finger. So um, you, you know, we have to go through the data set and uh, figure out exactly how often that happened. Um, this is a nice one. We found that double thing. So 42 is double 21, 68 is double 34. They were the Fibonacci numbers. Um, uh, we found those Lucas numbers, 29s and 47s. So we found all these uh, um, unusual patterns. And what's really new about this data set, where we never had before, is that we've got photos of all of them. And that's turned out to be really important when looking at those really rare occasions where something a bit odd happens. So this sunflower, in one direction, it's got, in, the, in this, going the, this direction, it's got 55 spirals. I've been laughed at for my hand gestures by my son, but that's, that's, that's parenthood. Um, in the other direction, um, it's actually much harder to count how many spirals there are. I had a go and I sort of gave up. Uh, and the reason is that, yes, you, I mean, I think you can see that uh, there are clear spirals in one direction, and it's hard to pick out spirals in the other direction. There is genuine disorder in this uh, sunflower in a way that I hadn't really thought about when we set the experiment up. I thought uh, we'll just set, count it up and count the sunflower, count the spirals, and if we get counts that aren't Fibonacci numbers, that would be really interesting. And what I hadn't really thought about was what happens if you've got really nice, well put together sunflowers, but they don't have clear spirals. Uh, and that's something that is a real challenge, I think, to these mathematical theories, right? to explain what kind of pattern should you see if you don't quite see order. It's not completely disordered, as far as in one direction, not in the other. And that's a really uh, open question, I think, for mathematicians of the future. So I'm going to say thank you at this point to all those who grew the sunflowers. Um, thank you to Arinma, because you won't get a thank you otherwise. Um, and I think I'm going to stop. Yeah, I'm going to stop now. Okay.